Good day there viewers, my name is Cliff and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. In today's episode of How to Cut Gemstones, it's going to be a lot different than my previous episodes. A lot of people have written in and said, could you please introduce us to your equipment? And I thought, well, why not? And the best way to start would be to introduce you to my faceting machine. I know there's going to be a lot of questions and answers, and I hope I can answer all those questions. So there's going to be several parts to this series about the equipment I use. So at the moment, I'm just doing a bit of a 360 around my machine. So before I start, just have a bit of a look around my machine, and then I'll introduce you to the questions that people have asked. So let's begin with the most popular question people seem to write in about. So the fact that I'm Australian, the type of machine I own is also an Australian machine. It's made by an engineer in West Heidelberg in the state of Victoria in Australia. And unlike a lot of machines, Australian machines tend not to be mass produced. They're usually made by faceters who are engineers and most of the time they are usually overbuilt and quite robust. So the second most popular question is Buying a fastening machine can be quite a subjective question. It all depends on how much money you have, what country you live in, and your circumstances. I believe as an Australian I would always buy an Australian machine like this one here, the VJ. I like the Halls machine which are made in Australia and I really do like my machine. They're usually easy to service. If parts break you can get them made up by engineers locally and uh, they're very robust solid machines compared to many of the machines made overseas. Uh, for example like the Facetron simply looks like a toy matched up to the machine I've got. But that doesn't mean to say that Facetron's a bad machine. I believe if you were a US citizen you should buy one because, you know, they're cheaper over there, easy to get parts also. So that would be the same for any other person in another country. I would always suggest buy a machine made in the country you live in. I think this section of the video will be really beneficial to those people who are new to faceting and have just purchased the faceting machine. Maintenance is an ongoing occurrence, particularly when you start cutting a new gem. Each time I cut a new gem, I regularly clean the mast and the fastening head assembly and height adjuster. And there's a correct way to do it and an incorrect way. I just saw recently on YouTube um, where someone's cleaning the mast and they use a cloth on the base plate first and they're cleaning the machine up with that and then they use that dirty cloth on their mast. And it's all about contamination. Contamination is the worst enemy of any gem cutter. So here I'm using a lint-free napkin and I'm using clean mineral oil, paraffin oil. Get the chemist grade or the medical grade and then what you do, you just lightly coat the outside as you clean it 
and just rub it up and down and you'll just clean off any dirt and residues from the steel. Now this is really important. After you've finished with your first napkin, then you need to bin it. Put it in the bin, get another one and redo it. After you've got the second napkin, you do the same process, clean it again and then you'll probably have less residue and contaminants on it and then bin that napkin and then the third napkin when you can see there's no dirt on it then you just lightly coat the mast. So once you've lightly coated the mast with the paraffin oil remember never touch it with your hands. Part of the coating of the paraffin oil is to protect it from rusting and acidity in your hands is never going to help. You want to keep this mast as clean and as pristine as possible. Now I'll be cleaning the height adjuster and the faceting head assembly and I've got both components on a nice clean tea towel both for padding and to keep contaminants out of the components. You just don't want dirt getting inside these components so don't go putting it on a dirty table or an old hessian sack. So the process is similar to the mask. I'm cleaning out the inside of the height adjuster with a clean napkin getting right in there and if there's any dirt on it I'll bin the napkin and repeat the process two or three times and it looks pretty clean so then I'll move on to the fastening head assembly and get right into the inside of that assembly where it sits over the mast really important you clean this part of the assembly because if you don't it will groove out your mast and that's the last thing you want and I've already seen a few of those on YouTube too that's all due to bad cleaning habits poor maintenance and you want a machine that is running nice and fluid and evenly. As a side note, try not to get any of this paraffin oil into the cheetah block or into the housing of your index wheel. This is the micro height adjust unit and it's one of the components that you have to understand really well on a fastening machine. One full rotation to the left from zero to zero equals one millimeter. So that will lower the fastening head assembly and now I'm rotating it to the right which will lift the fastening assembly and so one full rotation will lift that assembly by one millimeter. So I can raise or lower any gem that I cut by 1 20th of a millimetre and that's why I don't use depth gauges because you don't need depth gauges if you can understand how to use your height adjuster then a depth gauge is just a piece of decoration. This is the protractor on the fastening machine and this gauge will determine what angle you cut your facets at. This little component here that you see moving around is called the angle swivel stop unit and that will lock in the protractor to cut the angle on the gem. This is a micro fine adjust on the swivel stop unit and this will allow me to set the degrees to within one tenth of a degree. Also I can use this knob by turning it left or right and I can cheat on the table if I need to. So this is the end of Faceting Equipment Part 1. There will be more episodes of Part 2 and 3 and we'll be talking about all sorts of things like the cheetah, index wheels, motors and an important question 
that most people ask, how do you learn how to cut gemstones? That will be in the following episodes, all these questions, and I hope I can answer them. So until next time, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon. And most of all, take care. Bye.